All right, guys, welcome back. This is another edition of my upgrade that I'm performing on my, I call it the work PC, but I do sometimes use this for gaming, the kids, so does the kids. Um, recently, I upgraded this PC from 2700X to 5800X um, uh, C, uh, CPU, uh, Ryzen CPU, so which is working really well, and I've also upgraded the SSD uh, M.2 from um, third gen 500 gig to one terabyte uh, um, fourth gen on there, which I had some issue installation wise because I kept my old hard drive on and caused a problem. So I had to take everything out and reinstall everything quite a few times to get it all corrected. Um, next problem that I'm finding is the cooling because this um, case, if you're aware of it, will, uh, it does have air going through from all direction, which is quite good but it doesn't keep the chip cool enough. And also because it's got 120 mil red on there, the radiator on there, which I don't think is sufficient enough to cool that CPU. So what I've done is um, I've already got a Cooler Master 120 uh, uh, radiators in there. So I'm going with the one, the box that you can see right now, right there. So it's a bit of an experiment to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is first of all benchmark it uh, to see what sort of temperature I get with the 120 mil and then replace it with the 240 mil if I can squeeze it in there somehow in the case and then we'll see how that performs. So that is the agenda for today and I'm going to now just going to uh, do a benchmark, maybe show you clips of that and then later on it, it do the installation of the uh 240 mil uh, you know um uh, cooler and see if that works the water cooler that i've got already on there as i said it's already the same brand as what i've got exactly the same identical one but it is 120 and uh, this one is 240 so we'll see if the ryzen uh 75800x can perform better or is it is it stays cooler with as it is or would it be cooler with a bigger radiator now that'll be the experiment just to see if you how it works now let's get on with the testing the main thing to do is the idle temperature is 32 degrees let's call it that now i'm going to put a game on there and we're going to see what the temperature rises to um as, as a game played i think it just does a lot more work which rose quite high but i'm just gonna put a game on there first so we'll see how that works just in addition, it was 32 degrees and it went up to about 36 degrees. So between 32 to 36 degrees, what I'm looking at on idle temperature, on idle, um, just machine just turned on itself. And that's the temperature I'm getting with the CPU. So I put on Gears 4, because that's the game that I tend to play quite often. I've not, I can see the changes in temperature on this more. Um, so I have to see now what the temperature will be when I turn this on, on a, just an, again, just on, having the game on by itself. So click on Windows and the temperature now straight away, you'll notice, has gone to uh, 68 degrees. And it might go up a bit more, but we'll have a look to see what happens uh, when we're playing the game where the temperature should go up to quite high. Uh, this room is slightly cold, so I think it'll idle about 75 to 80 degrees but I really want to make sure the temperature doesn't go any higher when I do take the PC into the room where it's a bit more warmer. Uh, temperature is rising slightly more now, but we'll see what happens when we enter the game. Just checking the setting, I'm just going to keep it to Windows View, uh, display mode on medium default quality. Um, and we'll see what it turns out to be when it comes to temperatures on 1080p setting on this monitor. All right, started off Gears 4 and the temperature on a matchmaking position is showing up as you can't see on here now can you um, 73 to 75 degrees with the CPU being that and GPU being about 47 which is quite strange normally the GPU would shoot up quite high at this point but for some reason it's keeping quite cool in this room that's probably because I'm in my room outside which is slightly cooler than my uh, room where I normally play inside Okay, so this is the 240 radio that I'll be putting into my computer to test out which makes the difference. The 120 uh, radiator or the 240. So we expect the 240 to do better, but it's just an unboxing. This is from Amazon Warehouse deal. It came from quite far away. It wasn't in England, that's for sure. It came from somewhere like Barcelona, but it's still 
unused, untouched, so you saw everything got, you know, as it should be. Um, it's got the same fan as the one that's already got on here. I should open all these up and show you. And I think it might be RGB on the, um, yes, on the cooler head itself. It's got the RGB. And this, I'm not sure if it's got the lights on or not. It doesn't seem like it does. Um, it's got the little rubber here to stop the vibration noise. So that looks quite good. Um, we'll take this out now anyway. We're going to start to get things set up for the installation itself. Again, the second fan, the same. Put that back in there. And it comes with, it's almost brand new. Um, I'm pretty sure it hasn't been used. But good thing about getting the identical one that I've already got on my uh, motherboard is the fact that I don't have to change any set, uh, you know, anything on there. You just literally hook up and put it on as it was already. So uh, it comes with all the bits I need. Which is good. This I, I'm going to need this for the fan itself. Um, the two of them. So we'll keep this aside for now. We're going to make sure we've got the AMD version of the, oh, that's the Intel one there. And they also give the AMD version. I think everything I've already got on the system, uh, I've just got to swap them over quite easily. And that should be it. So looking at the radiator itself, I do like these radiators. They seem quite nice and beefy radiators. And if you can see it, there we go. And I'm assuming it's got the RGB on here, um, on the cooler itself. Let's take this out and have a look. You've got to peel this off before I put it on, of course. I've got to make sure that I do do that. Um, it's got the little connectors there, power. And the radio itself looks quite brand new and unused, of course, which is I'm quite happy with. It's not something that's been used or in any way. So we'll be putting that on my machine and upgrade it into this 240 radiator. So going back to the machine itself, all I'll be doing, the radius that goes on here, I don't know if you can see it, will get replaced with the one that I've already got. So all the connectors should be fine. It should be quite a simple process. My main concern is would it fit in there nicely without causing any problem. Um, and I think the, the loops on the one, the new one is much bigger, which is different. So let's have a quick look and see what the differences are. So. So I'm trying not to damage anything. So let's lift this up and let's lift this down. So looking at the pipe work itself, which is interesting to see, the difference between the 120 and 240 is the pipes are much bigger, which seems like a good idea and uh, may make a bit of difference. So I'm just worried that the, yeah, they look the roughly the same. So the pump itself looks bigger as well which I wasn't aware of, so I'm not sure how well this will fit. Let's put this to the side. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh no, it might be the same size, it might be the same size. So okay, so I'm gonna put stuff on now and um, let's see if we can get this fitted on nicely without any problem. Just realize I've gotta put the back plate on. The whole thing is completely different than I had expected. So that means I've got to use these as well. Or maybe not, actually maybe not, maybe not. I may have opened up the wrong one in the first place. Let's have a look. There's quite a few different fittings on here, so you've got to be careful of. Uh, I don't want to lose anything in the computer, so let's just open this up. It doesn't say to you is which is AMD, which isn't, which is Intel or any other. So normally they give you a back plate. This is for the AMD version. But it looks like, because I already have a backplate, standard backplate on there, I might not need to do this. I can probably just get away just by using this simple one, which makes more sense to me. So, this is all I wanted to use. That'll save me a lot of time. That'll be just as it is on there. It seems like the easiest option. It just goes on the side. So I try to keep it the same as I had before. Uh, maybe, I don't know if it's going to fit in there. Yeah, it should do, should do fit on there. So it'll just go like that. So 
So one will go here. And that's it, that's the easiest way to put it. I can't believe they give you back plates and everything else and I'm not gonna be using any of those. Just simply putting this on should do the job. So I'm gonna go on with that now. Just so that you're aware of it, just basically getting a small screw like this and just putting the plate on. Oh, nearly had the wrong way around, didn't I? This way it goes and the screwing it on from this side like this, it just screws on quite beautifully in there. Get the next screw. And the same again on this side, making sure you don't lose the screw anywhere. Okay, now that is literally just ready to go on to the motherboard as it is like that. Or should I say? I'm just wondering which is the best way to do it. Configuring how you want it, because it's a much thicker pipe, it's gonna cause me a bit of a problem, but because I need to somehow twist it around and maybe have it like that. Nope, can't do it that way. It has to go really close down, so you can see it's a very confined space. I'm going to have to find a better way of doing it. I might have to try a few trial and error. I could have put the radiator maybe. No, I can't put it at the top. It won't go there. The fence, I, can, I have to put on this side. It's the only side that has the maximum space. So you have to go around, twist it. Another difference that I've noticed is that, the, apart from the size and everything else, I don't think this one's got the RGB on it. Which is fine because in this case I don't really need an RGB. So I have to disconnect all the RGB stuff that I've got on here which I don't need at all. And then take this off which I'm trying to do right now. Just literally unscrewing the two screws on either side. And the other one as well. Just this way. It's a bit complicated when trying to do this. So what you're looking at here is 240 mil um, radiator there, goes all the way across to there. And also I've got some wiring that's really congested in there, I must say. Um, they're sort of a bit like in a zigzag manner, I don't know if you can see it all right from there. But let's see if I can get a light close up to show you. So here you go. You can see this one very congested going round. So the other one going around this power supply here, going down, and with it, I'm um, luckily enough. This is this case is not made for this, and also you've got the power supply there. And if you look at the side of the power supply there, it just got enough airflow. May just might come out from there, but then if there's a holes on the top here which will allow the airflow to come up. There will be some fans, as you can see from those that I'll be using to extract the um, hot air out from the case. But it is a very small compact case and from the side if i put the torch there you'll see you'll see this is where the cool air will go in through and get ejected from the top from here so now we're going to see what the temperature will be um when we get this machine running again 
all right guys now i've got to make a conclusion on this now i'm testing it uh, in a uh, best way that i can which is basically just to see idle temperature of when the computer is running on its own without doing anything what the temperature is and when i'm doing matchmaking which will be identical to the matchmaking that i did previously with my 120 red compared to the 240 red and straight away i can see on the 240 uh, uh, red of uh, um, when the game's starting and matchmaking the temperature is basically identical which I'm quite surprised about. So I'm not sure if I made the right choice of getting a bigger radiator in a confined space, which I thought would have done a better job. So the test comes out to be quite inconclusive and I'm quite disappointed. And idle temperature, as you can see on the screen, is still slightly higher. Uh, that could be because there's something happening in the background I'm not sure of. Um, but this is what it comes out to be. And I don't know what to say, to be honest with you, because I thought having a bigger radiator will have the double effect at least, uh, not by a few, you know, should be by a few degrees at least. But yes, so what does it mean? Um, I basically wasted 40 quid maybe just to get my temperature down as much as I can. But it might make a difference when it's a warmer room because this is a cooler room. I try to keep it to the same temperature to see if it makes a difference in a cool room. It didn't make that much difference. And I'm hoping in a warmer room it will make a difference. But I don't know what your thoughts are because 120 red, I thought of uh, do the same job as the 240 red. And I'm very much surprised, especially with this chip, which gets very hot. And, and I was hoping they'll make a difference. Now, what I might need to do if it does get hot, um, I might have to just undervolt it slightly to get the temperature down and keep the red as it is because it might make a difference in the future or in a certain circumstances when I'm doing video editing and stuff where it does need a lot of CPU power. But overall, I think 120 did the same job as a 240 on my daily use and that's the conclusion that I come, I come across from this experiment. And I hope you've seen the Cooler Master the Red does look nice and that uh, you know unboxing and stuff may have helped you a bit. So take care until next time. Bye.